I already looked at the Zima board. They say the world's first hackable single board computer. I don't know if it's the first or not, but it's a really cool little hackable single board computer. And what makes it special is the fact that it has an x86 CPU as opposed to like an ARM CPU. And it's tiny. It's so tiny. Plus it has PCI Express. Now, the difference in the Zima blade and the Zima board mostly are the ports. You get two Ethernet adapters on the Zima board, but otherwise the Zima blade has more USB and has a physical RAM slot instead of having the RAM soldered on there so you can take an SO dem and install whatever RAM you like. Now there's a couple different options for the Zima blade and I think it makes a really nice server so we've got the entire NAS kit here and I'll cover all that. But first off I want to talk about the version that we have and that's the Blade 7700. So what CPU does that come with? I don't, I don't know. And <laughs> it comes with one of four different CPUs and they've done this to keep the price low whatever they can find that's available in the right price they put it on there. So one of four different CPUs and they're all just about exactly the same speed so in order to check this out I plugged it up to my HDMI right here because you can do that with a little adapter from the, the mini display port that's on the back and I just checked because we have Linux on here it's got Casa OS just do LS CPU and it looks like we have the Intel Celeron in 3450 quad core no hyper threading on this but it's gonna be plenty fast I got a couple of these yeah I got some of these four terabyte Western Digital NAS drives so I'm going to use two of these and we'll show you what we can do with Casa OS uh, and just a couple extra drives for space. If you wanted to go crazy and you know get really, really serious about setting up a NAS, you can install um, TrueNAS on here, no problem. I would recommend the Linux flavor of TrueNAS, but you could do the BSD flavor if you like. This video is brought to you by our... I need to change this name. Sorry about this, but I'm not sorry about these deals. 50% off all these t-shirts. I got a bunch of t-shirts on the shelf over here. These are extremely premium. Ask anybody who's ever purchased one. They're the softest shirts that you're ever going to put on from any other tech website. I'll tell you that. Now, these are all 50% off with the coupon code SHIRTLYNOT. Above and beyond that, we have a ton of stuff on sale. So if you just click on this here, you'll see all the stuff we have on sale. These bags, $59. That's it. I have four of them and then they're gone forever, that's it. And these things are ridiculously premium. The materials here, that's the same material that they use to make seat belts. One of these left, somebody better get that before it's gone. Only about a half box of these left, so yeah, grab those things while we got them. And then just click on this, I'll be adding things to that sale list. And last but not least, I do have a few of these, I'm gonna add some more. Anyway, head over to epicpants.com. All these links are in the description, so enjoy the sale. Anyway, back to this, we'll cover the specs and then we'll uh, talk about what we're gonna do with this. Again, this is similar to the Zima board, but this one comes in a little case. It's easy to remove for like installing the RAM and everything, and then you pop it back on there, but that'll keep, you know, dust off of all the core components. And then of course we have our PCI Express slot there on the bottom for expandability. I don't know how many people are gonna use that, tell you the truth, but I think it's extremely useful if you wanted to plug like anything, LSI card, graphics card, whatever, you can plug anything you want in there. The sky is the limit with that. And then on one side, we have two SATA ports and a SATA power adapter. In the box, they've included an adapter that will let you hook up one of those SATA ports. And if you want to hook up the other one, well, you got to get another little adapter. So I feel like every reviewer said this, but it would be cool if that came with it, but they're making a couple extra bucks there. So if you want to have two drives, you got to get the adapter. That's just how it is. And then on the other side, so we've got USB type C, then we've got a regular USB right there, and there is our gigabit ethernet. We also have a mini display port right there, or just in case I need to access the terminal or access you know, the machine directly, get on the bare metal. But generally you're gonna be using this through your web browser. So I've got the Zima Blade 7700 NAS kit, and that comes with the Zima Blade. You got 16 gigabytes of memory and that's 1333 uh, DDR3. Keeps the price low and that's pretty much all you need. You don't need some crazy memory for this, but the, the amount of memory is nice. We've got a little two bay hard drive uh, dock. It's it's pretty cool. Just slide your hard drives in there. And then it also comes with the, the SATA Y cable. So the dock is really cool because the Zima, Zima blade just fits on top and all the cords can feed into both sides. And then you just have your two hard drives out there and then you pop it on your shelf and there you've got your NAS all set up. Uh, really easy DIY NAS. Now this is great for just someone who needs a simple NAS for your home but you can do all kinds of stuff. We'll show you that when we get into the uh, the software. Another thing that's cool about this is it's virtually silent. The only thing I can hear are those hard drives. So there's, you know, no fans or anything, just completely silent. Now, what can you do with this? Well, I said you can install like some NAS software or anything. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on Casa OS and I'll show you some of the stuff you can install with that. But you could turn this into an emulation station, install tons of ROMs, install all kinds of different things. It's x86. You could even put Windows on here if you like, or any variety of uh, Linux. 
So again, the sky is the limit when it comes to all that. So let's go ahead and load up Casa OS. Now, when you first plug it in, your username and password are just Casa OS for both of those. And then you set up an account. And in order to navigate to this, all you really need to do is just plug it into the ethernet and then you head over to casa.local and then just log right in. And if you haven't used Casa OS before, this is an OS, it's a Linux OS based on Debian. And I love the fact that you can just go there for the browser. It's, you know, like otherwise, this is what you got if you plug up your HDMI, it's just command line. So this is just running over HTTP and you can enable HTTPS if you want to or know what you're doing. We're not gonna do that in this video. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but you can install all kinds of different containers here and we have all sorts of stuff. And I've even enabled some more apps. You can add more app sources. You can just go online and get Cal Casa OS app sources to basically install well just about anything. These are all just different Docker containers that install very, very easily. Um, it's not that you, you don't have to worry about any of the configuration. You can just install things. Every now and then there'll be a couple things you need to install, but I've already got, you know, Pi-hole up and running and, you know, it gives itself a port so you can get Pi-hole going and I've got NextCloud up and running. But I want to go a little bit crazier because I do have those two drives and it immediately found those drives when I plugged it in. So let's click on our storage manager and we're going to create some storage here. We can get some information about our drives right here. You can see that's our internal uh, MMC, which it does come with 32 gigabytes of internal MMC. If I failed to mention, now I did. All right, so I'm going to format and create because I've used these drives in a NAS before. So just give it a second. It's going to format one of the drives and then we'll have some storage options here. Now, again, if you really wanted like redundancy and you wanted to run like a NAS just go ahead and install TrueNAS and I'll do that in a future video just so we can take a look at TrueNAS. I haven't used TrueNAS since the free NAS days. So I'm actually curious to log in and just see how much, you know, TrueNAS has changed over the many, many years because now we have a Linux flavor and a BSD flavor and they all have different app environments that are similar, but you know, one's more based upon, I guess, security and the other one's based upon just the app environment. So there we go, we got that set up. Now let's create storage with the other one, why not? Format and create, let's do it. Now I can click here to browse my files and you can see we've got our two different storage spots over here. So I'm just going to throw some movies on here. Let's, let's just throw storage one and I'll just create a new folder here and I'll, I'll just get some anime movies or something. I don't know. We'll do a shared folder right here and let's call it anime movies, all one word, whatever. There we go. And it's a share. Now, if I want to access this, let's see here, just click on the little dot, dot, dot right there. I'll make it bigger so you can see over here on the side, there's a dot, dot, dot. And we have go to network path or go to whatever. Just go to network path. And then we can copy for PC or for Mac. There we go. Copy that. Press Windows key R if you're on Windows and just paste that in there. Casa.local, then the name of your folder. And there we are. There's the folder. The other thing to note is if you wanted to map this to your system, well, all you need to do is press Windows key R. Go to backslash backslash Casa dot local. That's it. And then it'll show you all of the different shared folders that you have right here. We just have this one, but you can right click on it, come down to map network drive, and then pick one. Let's say I want to, I'll just put this to my Q folder. How about that? Yeah. And I've mapped it now. I can close out the files thing right here. And now I'm going to go to my app store and let's install Jellyfin. How about it? All right. Jellyfin personal media server. I'm just going to install this. There we go. All right. Installation is complete. And then our Jellyfin icon just appeared right there. So now I'm going to click on that and we can open up Jellyfin and configure it. So Jellyfin is going to go to Casa OS and then 8097. And when you first start Jellyfin, this is your quick start guide. So let's go ahead and set that up really quick. Go to username. All right. Username, password, they no longer use pins. Now, when you're first here, you need to set up a media library. So I'm gonna click on this. So then right here, you have folders and we can add a folder by you know pressing the plus button. Whoops, we can't go any farther right here because we haven't uh, added these paths. So come back to your Casa OS. I'm gonna close my files area here. And we have some configuration options here for Jellyfin. So just click on the dot, 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 go to our settings. And then we can add some stuff down here. Right here, we've got volumes. Let's just add some volumes, shall we? And the add button is right on top. So I'm gonna press the add button. I'll put another one down there and just drop in whatever stuff there for storage one. And we can save that. So we'll make that a container. Now, when we come in here to our folders and press plus, look, it's down here now. So yeah, click on that. And there's all of our anime movies right there. Hit okay, hit okay. And we have just added a movies library. I'm gonna, I forgot to title this, whoops. All right, let's add one more media library just for fun. How about it? I wanna note the transfer speeds to this are pretty good. I'm transferring two files right now and it's it's well over 100 
uh, megabytes per second, so the Gigabit Ethernet is running at a completely full speed. Come back up to Jellyfin, hit Add Media Library. It's going to be movies as well. This is just regular movies, so I'll leave that. Enable the library, yes. Uh, folders, there we go. Push plus on folders. Just give it a second here. Oh, whatever. If it doesn't work, just search, hit OK. We're done. All right, you can set up remote access if you want to, but local access in your house is going to work regardless of whether or not this is checked. Well, oh, whatever. I'll, maybe I'll log in remotely, get it secured with HTTPS. All right, we're going to sign in right now. And here we are. It's finding the movies. It's finding them slowly. Oh, check that out. It's already finding all the movies. I didn't put much on there. So if it doesn't find something, just click on the dot, dot, dot right here and then do identify. And this is Fatal Fury from 1994. That was faster than expected. All right. I actually like the open movie database just fine. So we'll click on that. That's more responsive than my other machine. Hey, this is so much faster than my other NAS. Now you can create, you know, images for all this or do whatever you want. So yeah, there we go. We got this up and running. Playing in the browser, I mean, I don't usually play it that way, <laughs> but you, you can play it in the browser if you want to. Just turn this down. Check it out. We're watching it right here in the browser. Cool. So yeah, that was, okay, that was easier than I thought. I, I was doing it the first time while showing you because I know my way around a few things, so I figured I could get away with it. But I also like the fact that I'm exploring this as I'm showing you just to show you how easy it is to work with Casa OS. I'm a little bit shocked at how easy that was. And I'm also shocked at how much faster this installation of Jellyfin is compared to the one I have on my NAS. Like this, I have, you know, like, okay, I've got a, an Asus Tor NAS. This is way snappier. Like it takes forever for that thing to search for things and update images and everything. So that's a bit surprising. I didn't expect that since the CPU is not that different. I mean, we're using 95% of it right now because we're doing all kinds of things at the same time and Jellyfin's playing a, a video, but it's working just fine. And you can see we're not using much of that RAM. So yeah. Anyway, if you keep Casa OS on there, you're gonna have a system that can do a lot of different things. And if you want to use something else, by all means, use any flavor of Linux, any x86 based operating system that you want. Use BSD, it doesn't matter. If you're building like a, a router or something, you're gonna probably wanna get a Zima board, but for doing stuff like this, the Zima blade is probably the way to go because you can install more RAM. And especially if you're gonna use a ZFS file system with TrueNAS, but that's gonna be coming up in a future video. So that 16 gigabytes of RAM will come in handy for specifically having a NAS or just running all kinds of things at the same time. But yeah, this is really cool. And the other thing I wanna mention right now is you know this is uh, you know not like a really expensive huge big bulky NAS that you're going to put in your whatever closet it doesn't have uh, you know I'm, I'm not powering it with a gazillion hard drives I've got four uh, two four terabyte hard drives in there so yeah you can do a lot of stuff with this like more than what most of you know you can do more than what most people need with this but it's not like an industrial solution like a lot of people have in their homes for some reason myself i'm kind of included but yeah you know what i mean like it, you can do a lot with it but this is a really good platform to learn because it's not extremely expensive and i think the stuff that you can learn while tinkering and messing around with this is a it's a pretty good return on investment if you think of it that way i don't like to think of everything's in terms of what you get back as far as like returning your investment if you enjoy it you have fun you learn something that's worth more than any kind of like ROI jargon, whatever. So you get, what I'm saying is you're getting something back. And even if it's not like, you know, you're getting a job in the Linux world or whatever, you know, just the knowledge that you can gain by messing around and doing this stuff, that's pretty good. And it can apply to a lot of different things since this is Linux, you know, or BSD or whatever you put on there. But, you know, I'm really enjoying Casa OS, like quite a bit. It's, it's just so easy to come in here and be like, oh yeah, just come in and edit these things. Oh, let's check, check my settings here. That's so easy so much easier than messing around with a Docker container. And this one here, this is our pie hole. So I guess TrueNAS will be coming up next. We'll take a look at how that runs. At this point, I'm hesitant to remove Cos OS because it's just so easy, but I will for you. And we'll try TrueNAS and see how that goes. So let me know what you think. Just go down to the comments and all that. Let me know. Let me know what kind of NAS you're running at home. Are you running a NAS? Is this something that you would do? Would this be beneficial? We can break away from the Spotify nonsense and the Netflix nonsense and just run stuff on our own computer. We don't have to answer it to anybody. You can just get whatever you want and put it on there. So yeah, that's pretty cool to me. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.